Okay, welcome. Hope you can hear okay. Not too cold, not too hot. <laughs> it's always difficult. So we're going to hopefully really enjoy an opportunity today to just taste a little bit of inner peace, of the deep potential we all have in our hearts to experience and enjoy peace, which will allow us to gradually and change our life. We can carry this peace into our daily life experience and become a source of peace in the chaos, in the confusion, in the noise and bustle, stress of daily life. So it's a very important thing for all of us, I think, you know, in the chapter on inner peace in Transform Your Life, Geshe Kelsang, and it introduces the idea of inner peace. He says, all living beings have the same basic wish to be happy and avoid suffering. But very few people <coughs> excuse me, understand the real causes of happiness and suffering. We generally believe that external conditions such as food, friends, cars and money are the real causes of happiness. And as a result we devote nearly all our time and energy to acquiring these. Superficially it seems that these things can make us happy. But if we look more deeply, we shall see that they also bring us a lot of suffering and problems. So yeah, we can ask ourselves how have we what do we really want in our life? What is our deepest wish? Yeah. What do we yearn to achieve every day? That's basically to be free of suffering and to find happiness, isn't it? We're constantly trying to recognize sources of suffering and run away from them or destroy them if we can't get away from them. And we're constantly trying to find sources of happiness and run towards them, to grab them, to not be separate from them. I think that's our fundamental, the energy of life, basically, the energy of our human life experience. We're running away from suffering and trying to run towards happiness. Mm. But all this running, <laughs> all this running, actually impossible to gain peace if we're always running, if we're always trying to sort of juggle the things of life as well and to keep all the conditions together that make us happy. It's not just one ball that we have to keep off it's we've got to keep the partner happy we've got to keep the kids happy we've got to keep the job going we've got to keep the house from falling down we've got to keep the car on the road get the insurance do the tax it's like way <laughs> i was never a good juggler <laughs> anyway <laughs> i never got beyond one ball. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're just always dropping, aren't we? We're always not able to keep up in the juggle of life. 
keeping it all together. And so we never can just relax. We never find peace in that constant stress that comes from trying to keep all those balls up and going. Hmm. I'm not saying that we shouldn't try to take care of our partners and keep our kids happy and get enough money to pay the taxes and the insurance and the rent or the mortgage or everything. Of course we have to do these things, but when we see them as the ultimate meaning of our life, when we give them ultimate say in our happiness, our unhappiness, then we are at their mercy. We are controlled by those conditions. And so when they do fall apart, we're not going to find any happiness at all. We've got to try our best to keep the things of life going on the external side, but we've got to also look for peace from a different source. We've got to look for happiness from somewhere else because that constant struggle to keep all those bits of our life afloat, I say, in itself it can't bring us peace. It's stress at the best of times (laughs) when it's all sort of still up in the air. They're all still there. We haven't dropped them, but as soon as we drop them, then it's suffering. Then we... Struggling, we're depending upon those external conditions, then we never find what we're looking for. We never find peace, never find happiness. I guess this continues saying happiness and suffering are opposites. So if something is a real cause of happiness, It cannot give rise to suffering. Okay, you get that? If something's a real cause of happiness, it means that it always should produce happiness. And the more you get of it, the happier you are. Mm. Everyone in agreement? Mm. All right. So if food, money and so forth really are causes of happiness, they can never be causes of suffering. Yet we know from our own experience that they do often cause suffering. For example, one of our main interests is food. Is it? Come on, who's <laughs> we don't care about what we eat, do we? We never, we never spend our whole don't spend half our life planning our next meal and cleaning up after the last one, <laughs> the other half. <laughs> and the food we eat is also the principal cause of most of our ill health and sickness. And how many people suffer from diabetes or from some allergy or some food intolerance and it actually causes more, much more suffering than pleasure. And actually it doesn't even cause health, it causes sickness. And if we 
even if something doesn't make us sick, if we eat too much of it, it will make us sick. You know, too much chocolate, too many cream cakes, naturally transform what brings us happiness into a cause of suffering. On a big scale, in the process of producing the things we feel will make us happy, we have polluted our environment to such an extent that the very air we breathe and the water we drink now threaten our health and well-being. We love the freedom and independence a car can give us, but the cost in accidents and environmental destruction is enormous. We feel that money is essential for us to enjoy life, but the pursuit of money also causes immense problems and anxiety. Even our family and friends with whom we enjoy so many happy moments can also bring us a lot of worry and heartache. So this is the truth, isn't it? We do tend to just live like that. Our society is geared into consuming. We consume food, we consume drink, we consume products, gadgets, cars, houses. We consume people, almost. <laughs> our kids, our partners, we expect to get something from them. We expect happiness from them. They're a, another part of our collection of sources of happiness, but yeah, they can bring us some temporary happiness, some temporary relief at times from suffering. But in general, they bring their problems and yeah, they actually in themselves can cause a lot of pain. So where is the solution to this? So Geshna says, this shows the solution of our problems to those of society as a whole does not lie in knowledge or control of the external world. And why is this? Because happiness and suffering are states of mind. So their main causes cannot be found outside the mind. The real source of happiness is inner peace. If our mind is peaceful, we shall be happy all the time, regardless of external conditions. But if it is disturbed or troubled in any way, we shall never be happy no matter how good our external conditions may be. Mm, so, the real cause of happiness are conditions within our mind. If we get the right collection of conditions together within our mind, we will feel happy. And that happiness will be reliable. Because the more we increase those causes and conditions inside our mind, the happier and happier we get. So they are true causes of happiness. Unlike the external causes of happiness which tend to cause suffering, the more we get, the less pleasure and happiness they bring. They're not true causes of happiness, but the inner causes of happiness are true causes of happiness because they 
actually bring real happiness and the more we get the happier we are they cannot produce transform into suffering so this is extraordinary for me it's so sort of obvious in a way and yet it's completely alien to our society, to our technology, our understanding. All that we teach in our schools, in our universities, all that we put into practice in our daily life contradicts this simple truth that the true causes of happiness are inner conditions within our mind. We don't teach people how to recognize the causes of happiness within their mind and how to be able to increase them. At school we don't teach people how to recognize the causes of suffering which are also inner conditions in our mind. Because suffering is part of our mind as well. It depends upon inner causes and conditions, certain thoughts, certain mis- mistaken conceptions or false expectations and the source of all our suffering. And right thought, right understanding, right inner wisdom, we can say, is the source of all freedom from suffering and happiness and peace. So we're now going to do our first meditation to learn, to find, to get together those inner causes of happiness and peace Mm -hmm. which will bring us a taste of real peace and therefore real happiness. Very simple, very practical. Most of you probably have practiced it many times already in our different classes. Just what we need to do to begin with is learn just to let go of the constant, distracting, disturbing thoughts and feelings of our daily life. That uh, We've all brought them with us, haven't we? We've all brought <coughs> some worries with us, some, <coughs> excuse me. We've all brought our. <laughs> excuse me. Not doing very well in the speech line. <laughs> oh well. <coughs> so we've all brought our problems with us now when we sit down quietly then we suddenly realize what problems uh, we brought from our daily life what is actually going on in there all sorts of worries and maybe some anxiety about the future some something about the past that we can't forget can't let go of keeps coming back, disturbing our peace of mind, destroying the, say, natural state of inner peace, which is deep down below those worries, below those disturbing thoughts and feelings. In our hearts, we've got an extraordinary, deep, peaceful, joyful, blissful space we visit that space actually every whenever we manage to go into deep sleep whenever we 
let go of our worries and our disturbing, kind of gross, daily thoughts and feelings. We disconnect from our body, its pains, its tiredness, its stress and exhaustion. And we go into this deep, blissful, peaceful space of sleep where we recover some energy. We recover from the stress of life. We manage to let go for a while. So through meditation we can learn to go into that deep, peaceful space consciously without losing it, without losing consciousness, without losing our capacity to enjoy and consciously enjoy and use that powerful inner space of mind. We need to do this, we need to learn to just let go, let go of all the sort of cloud-like thoughts and feelings that are bubbling up in the in our head, in the grosser the surface of our mind, we can say. Just gently letting go of them. Hold, let our mind settle and rest and become still within this deep, clear space, but totally awake, not asleep. So how do we do that? We need an object to hold on to, so that we, through focusing on an object, we can take our mind away from the worries, the distracting thoughts, the cloudy feelings. And we can at the same time prevent ourselves from falling asleep. If we're concentrating on something, we can't sleep. But if we are concentrating on one thing continuously, an object of called placement, meditation, then we can't think about other things either. We let go of those other distracting, disturbing thoughts and feelings. So the simplest way is to use our breath as that object on which we focus, we bring our mind into focus and hold moment by moment in what we call mindfulness the the power of our memory to not forget what we are doing what we're focusing our mind on not forget our breath we keep remembering and through that memory, focusing and refocusing on the breath, moment by moment. And just that simple stream of mindfulness, that simple stream of concentration gradually will give us the power, the strength to let go of those other thoughts and feelings like clouds that are bubbling up in this space of our mind. We let them go, we just stop thinking them. They're still trying to think themselves, but we are not identifying with those thoughts. We're not thinking them, we are not being disturbed by them. And so, as we don't get involved in them, they will unthink themselves naturally. They'll just dissolve and disappear, become 
nothing, like clouds dissolving into empty sky. And we've got a beautiful day for this meditation today. No clouds, they've all gone. Where did they go? They just dissolved into that space, didn't they? As the temperature changed, the humidity changed, then those clouds have just that were here yesterday, quite grey, quite sort of solid, have just dissolved, gone back into empty space. Our thoughts are like clouds, formations of clouds coming out of the empty space of our mind. But if we don't get involved in them, if we don't give them, if we don't feed them by being involved in them, then they and just dissolve back into that empty space. It's like blowing up a balloon but not tying the knot and then it goes <laughs> makes a funny noise and then dissolves and disappears, becomes nothing. Those thoughts leave our mind, just dissolving back into our mind and our mind will naturally come to a state of peace. So first meditation, we'll use our breath to disconnect from the disturbing, distracting worries, anxiety, dark depression, whatever thoughts, whatever disturbing feelings are coming into our mind. We use our breath just trying to take our mind away from them, hold it moment by moment, create this stream of single-pointed concentration that gradually will become deeper and deeper. As the thoughts, we let the thoughts go, they disappear, they dissolve and disappear, then the energy of those thoughts, the energy of the mind is gradually absorbed into our stream of concentration. Gradually our mind becomes stronger and stronger, that concentration. It's like at the beginning our mind is quite distant from the object of concentration, our breath. There's a sense of our breath being here and our mind being here. But gradually we Focus on the breath, keep focusing, keep that stream of awareness focused and trying to feel our mind mix with the breath and eventually it will mix, we'll feel the mind mix with the object, uh, the breath, the simple feeling of the air moving in and out of our body until all we feel is the breath. Our mind becomes absorbed into the breath and all the distracting, disturbing thoughts disappear completely. There's no space left for them. The whole mind becomes just like this beautiful cloudless sky. But all we feel is this subtle, gentle flow of our breath, moment by moment. It's as though our breath fills the whole universe, almost becomes the whole of our being. We become one with it and enjoy in that sense of absorption, of deep conscious experience of every moment of our breath, a great sense of peace, and in that peace, great joy, bliss, and even our body sort of becomes lighter and less heavy, less suffering. You can even almost disconnect from the body, almost. It's difficult because we're concentrating on the breath within the body, but gradually it can take us so deep into that space. 
what we shall do for the final minutes of the meditation is actually we can then let go of the breath and just focus on that clear, deep space which is opened like a cloudless sky free of any cloudy thoughts, disturbing memories, visions, whatever, conversations. We just try to hold our mind in that clear inner space and focus on it and that deep sense of just being at peace with our own mind, our own mind completely free of all the normal, gross thoughts, distracting, disturbing thoughts and feelings and just try to absorb ourselves into that space beyond the thoughts and focus on that sense of deep inner peace and space, be free of thoughts, the actual, say, essence of our mind, our consciousness. Hold that moment by moment for the final minutes of our meditation. We can use our imagination to help us get in that space. Just imagine inside like a vast space, like a sky free of clouds and focus on that and Try to feel that is the nature of your mind itself, deep down. Okay. Right, I'll guide you through that meditation now. So first we just adjust our posture, let's try to relax the stress, the tension in our body, let go of the physical tension in our shoulders, our back, our neck. Just gently straighten, release, let go. Keeping our hands comfortable on our lap. Our head just slightly tilted forwards. Our chin slightly tucked inwards. Mouth relaxed and our eyes just gently closed, allowing enough light to enter to keep our mind clear, awake. motivate ourselves to do the meditation, thinking how wonderful it would be if we can discover this inner source of peace, inner source of joy and happiness. 
strengths and confidence. We can begin to transform our lives into a joyful spiritual journey, a path of peace and love and wisdom. become a source of peace and happiness for our family, our friends, and our work. Bring the light of wisdom into the darkness of confusion and depression. It causes so much suffering in this world. With this motivation, we begin to look inside the inner space of our mind itself. Let go of the distracting sounds of the city around us. Let go of the inner distractions of random thoughts and feelings, memories and emotions, like clouds are troubling, obscuring the inner clarity of our mind. Do that we gently turn our mind to our breath. Try to feel our mind mix with that gentle, natural, continuous flow, the air. As we breathe in and out, just follow that natural rhythm, natural flow, subtle feeling, the air moving, focus on it, try not to forget. moment by moment.
keep trying to be mindful of your breath, moment by moment. Gradually feel your mind getting closer and closer till it becomes one with the breath. cloud-like distractions, thoughts and feelings start to fade away, dissolve, disappear to the vast, clear inner space of your mind. Keep our mind mixed with the breath. Just gently, patiently holding, being mindful. completely dissolve and disappear.
minutes of our meditation, we can just feel our mind dissolve into this vast, clear inner space. So all the cloud-like thoughts disappear. Let go of the breath. Just feel yourself become one. That blissful inner space. feeling, in a stillness, silence. Moment by moment, without distraction. We gently draw to a close our meditation. Try that, losing that sense of connection, and deep space, clear space in our hearts. And every thought we think. Everything we say or do comes from that clear, focused stillness, joyful, powerful inner space of concentration. Listen to the subsequent teachings on inner peace from that peaceful space, from whatever experience we have gained. So, 
So to give a few extra instructions on learning to clear our mind, learning to find this inner space, this inner peace, <coughs> that come from the um, inst- <coughs> instructions on what we call the Mahamudra lineage of meditation. To do this, we use wisdom, a wisdom that understands that everything that is appearing to our mind, everything, that all the sounds we hear, all the things that we remember, thoughts we think, fantasies we develop, all the physical sensations within our body are just like illusions. They're like bubbles arising out of the ocean that burst back into that ocean and disappear. We don't concentrate on the bubbles, but we use the... And then the bubbles is just an analogy of something that appears but has no essence. It arises to causes and conditions and then disintegrates, disappears completely. Mm. Similar, a rainbow appears in the sky, and yet it's got no essence. It depends upon causes and conditions. When those causes and conditions change, the rainbow fades and disappears. In fact, the rainbow is fading right from the very beginning of it appearing. It might get stronger, but that is just part of a process of it disappearing. And the truth is that everything that we can touch, can see, can smell, can taste, can experience in our mind is like that, just arising like bubbles and appearing and then disappearing. Nothing is lasts for one moment. It's changing, transforming in a constant process of disintegration and transformation in something else. If we understand this, it's so easy to let go. We remember somebody who maybe made us angry yesterday or the day before we get, but then suddenly we recognize actually the person who made us angry doesn't exist anymore. They've disappeared, haven't they? They've gone. They disintegrated and disappeared the moment that they were making us angry. They changed into somebody else. They don't, that angry person, that unpleasant person that we are remembering yesterday and still getting angry with actually doesn't exist anymore. They've gone. Oh no, they haven't. (laughs) (laughs) I met them again today and they were still unpleasant. (laughs) (laughs) Even worse. But actually they're still different. And eventually uh, they might recreate an unpleasant appearance for a while. But eventually that will cease. 
because every moment it's changing, it's transforming. And we are not the same people we were when we came into this room. We have now different thoughts, different feelings, different experiences. There's nothing left of Gen Kaosang Tarpa who came into this room an hour ago and sat on this strange box. That's me, by the way. And started to give this talk. That person who walked in has ceased, has gone, disappeared in the past, nothing left. A new person is here, appearing, arising, moment by moment. Our ignorance is, says, no, 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 it's just, there's something there that's the same. And we find it scary almost, a bit disturbing to think that actually there's nothing the same. There's no, nothing that lasts for more than one instant and then it's gone. It transforms into something else and that transforms into something else. So the person, me, of this moment is depending upon the previous moments of me, but those previous moments of me, those streams of thoughts and feelings and ideas and physical presence have ceased, completely gone. There's just this illusion-like present, ever-changing process going on, which is me. Hmm. Hmm. This is amazing. This is the truth. Now, this is, we say, a truth that on a physical level, then atomic particle physics is actually starting to understand at last that our bodies, our physical in reality, is just in this, it's a constant process of illusion like appearance and disappearance. There's nothing the same from one moment to another. Energy appears and disappears in this ever-changing process of the dance of life, we can say. But our mind is the same. Our feelings are no more substantial than water bubbles arising and bursting and disappearing back into the ocean. There's nothing. They might have similar feelings to yesterday, but they're not the same. They've changed. They're changing every moment. Nothing is reproducing itself exactly how it was. If it did, it'd be very boring. <laughs> Groundhog Day is very boring. <laughs> Live the same life the same day. In this static sense of continuity, repetition is extremely boring and yet we crave that because it seems to give us some sense of solidity and security but it just doesn't exist. We're grasping at an illusion of continuity, an illusion of solidity that isn't there. It's nowhere to be found. And the beauty of this is that this is like we can use this wisdom to clear our mind of all the agitation, all the bubbles, all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the experiences, the pleasure. There's a bit of pleasure coming up. I feel good. I feel pleasant. Oh, I've got a nice feeling in my stomach. Mm. And grasp hold of it, but it's gone. It was just like a bubble that burst. It's gone. And the pain in my head, or in my tooth, or in the lack of my tooth, in the hole where my tooth was yesterday, it's going moment by moment. Let go of it, and it's gone. 
hold on to it and it keeps on reproducing it keeps on bugging it keeps on disturbing mm. we can use this wisdom in the ultimate sort of just let go the ultimate sort of just deep letting go it's like yeah in, to use an analogy just like letting yourself sink into a deep ocean out of which all these bubbles are rising but you just don't get involved in them you just keep <coughs> letting them go letting them arise whatever's appearing to my in my body the pain in my knee the pleasure in wherever it may be if you've got any pleasure in your body very rare <laughs> certainly are the in the thoughts the memories of yesterday with just bubbles the sounds of the ambulances going by just bubbles the just coming bursting disappearing and we just let our mind naturally through that wisdom just keep letting go and let just keep and our mind will just settle naturally it's just like going deep, deep, deeper, deeper down into that ocean until there's no bubbles left. There's no distraction. The plane's coming over. Yeah, but it's just a process, isn't it? It's an ever-changing process of sound appearing. There's nothing continuous or lasting from one moment to the next so it's just gone through the space of your mind and it hasn't disturbed that wisdom brings stillness because we can through looking at just being aware and accepting the change accepting the ever moment, momentary disintegration of whatever's appearing the mind just naturally comes to stillness within that change. Does that sound reasonable? Makes sense? Hmm? It works. It really does work. If we want to do it, if we really deeply wish to experience profound concentration, great bliss, great peace, and then be able to carry this into our daily life. This wisdom is a wonderful way of getting into that space and then staying in that space in our daily life. So we deal with our problems that are in our work, in our family, in whatever's going on, but we're seeing them as processes, as they're not they're changing moment by moment. We've the problem isn't going to last forever by its own nature. Any pain that we feel isn't going to last forever. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Any pleasure isn't going to last forever. So we don't get hooked on it. We don't get attached to it. We can enjoy it and then let it go. It's gone. And it doesn't disturb the fundamental peace that comes from our wisdom from our wisdom just allowing us to go and say with the flow to move with the flow rather than clinging on you know, so what we're normally doing is we're in this great flow of time you know, that unstoppable, can't stop time but somehow we believe we can cling on to the past and it'll give us happiness we're clinging on to some wonderful experience we had as though it's still here and yet it's gone it's like trying to f swim against the current of an unstoppable river it's exhausting completely exhausting we feel like life's always disintegrating around us and everything we do we're struggling to sustain is falling apart and we just can't we get so stressed so what we need to do is stop struggling. 
just relax and go with the flow. And then it's like when we're going with the flow, we're in stillness, aren't we? We're not fighting against the current. We're actually at peace. Just the current is taking us with it. And all the stress of life has gone. We can then start to direct ourselves in that current. Say, okay, let's go a bit to the right or a bit to the left. Or let's just go straight ahead. We've got choice then about the future. But while we're struggling against that current, trying to pretend things aren't changing, we can somehow make them become some solid and real source of happiness and yeah we're just being exhausted and stressed because they're falling apart around us moment by moment mm. does that make sense anybody feel that's uh, scary or unacceptable wrong Unpractical. Any questions? Any ideas? Can we live like that in this modern world? Yes, Jan? Um, it's just good to watch that you don't become different. Mm hmm. It's a good question. Yeah, we don't become indifferent because when we use wisdom to let go and go with the flow, we find a sense of peace inside and we realize that others around us haven't got that peace. And we've got an, an, imp an overwhelming natural sense of compassion comes. We want to help those around us to let go to go with the flow, to enjoy what they can while it lasts without clinging and to not get trapped in those tunnels without an end and problems and suffering and difficulties arise. We, we feel much more close to others, much more space for others, much more empowered to help others because we're not desperately sinking with them in our struggle, in our stress, in our obsession to make the unmanageable managed and to keep all those balls upright. We keep as many up as we can, but if we drop one, we don't get stressed. We just carry on. You know, and we're much more focused, we're much more effective at keeping the balls up then because... We know the nature of the balls is to be changing moment by moment. We've got to constantly be adjusting, whereas with ignorance, we feel once we've sorted something, it's going to be sorted forever. We're not, we're caught completely out of unprepared when it falls apart again, you know, because we've got that false sense of it somehow being sorted forever when it never was. So we're much more in control of the ever-changing external situations and much more effective, much more kind, much more productive, much more wise, much more peaceful. Hmm. And we don't build up expectations too much. We, it doesn't mean that we don't have any expectations at all. But we just have reasonable expectations. Yeah, maybe we can keep this ball going and get that one together. And yeah, maybe we can keep the job going and pay the mortgage and bring the kids up. But we're not clinging on when anything, any part of those bits and pieces starts to fall apart. We, we don't get stressed, we just accept that change, accept it's part of the flow, the process of life and readjust, just try to make a new and whatever the best job 
of a bad of a bad deal. Mm -hmm. Carry on going. Uh, yep. In terms of relationships, if you let go of an idea of what someone is like, if someone is, for example, unpleasant, and then you let go of that idea that you have about them, and then it's like giving them freedom to see what they want, it can then be quite disappointing when they're unpleasant again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it shouldn't be because we just keep letting go we have to keep on just that letting go knowing that eventually they will change but how do you stop being disappointed like, because you're not expecting them to be oh they can be They, you know we, we just don't expect them to be become pleasant or to <laughs> be unpleasant they just change into whatever their process of life is doing moment by moment we don't grasp onto any of those appearances as being them because they're not they they will change they are changing they're not as they might be less slightly less unpleasant now that they were yesterday it's wonderful it's a positive change they might be more unpleasant but we don't depend upon them being pleasant or unpleasant for our happiness. We depend upon our wisdom for our happiness. It's releasing our mind from depending upon them. We're not depending upon them being pleasant to feel good ourselves. We, so we've been, we're finding, hap excuse me, finding happiness from just our lack of addiction of dependence upon them and finding peace in our mind because we're not we've let go of yesterday's anger so we're peaceful today they still behave badly we let go of today's anger because we're, st we're feeling good we've let go of yesterday's anger so we're not feeling bad we're in a good space we're happy <laughs> that does help. Yeah, that actually comes in the subsequent instructions of Mahamudra. <laughs> we expect the worst. <laughs> yeah. When you manage your own expectations, maybe. Mm-hmm. more skill and balance because your mind is much more balanced you're not grasping on to this you say inherent evil doer who is harming this young in a uh, sort of vulnerable person you know they can change and but you find that at the moment of course we cannot allow them to out of their delusion to harm to suffer themselves and and create suffering for somebody else we we can intervene yeah with no problem in fact with much more skill now if we grasp at them as some inherent evil doer then our normal reaction is an over reaction and like we want to hang them or electrocute them or drown them or chop them into little pieces you know it's not going to help them change but it doesn't mean that we underreact and just let them carry on at all we just act with appropriate wisdom that can hopefully help them to see how wrong it is what they're doing and to stop then we have to sort of refrain uh, restrain them there's no contradiction in acting with strength to restrain and control people who are self-destructing from themselves and harming others in the process we have to separate them from the situation 
and give them the space, hopefully, to change in and take them out of the situation where their obsession is causing them to act in a very disturbing, violent way and give them a space in prison or wherever it is, in a hospital somewhere, or a, yeah, somewhere where they're protected from themselves and able to then maybe learn to discover within themselves a positive solution, let go of their hatred or whatever it is they're clinging on to of the past, which it's always their mother or their father in modern day psychology now, and the source of all our problems, and yet that's wrong. That is, it's our clinging on that's the main problem. It's all gone, whatever they did in the past has gone, disappeared. We have to freshly live each moment and not condition ourselves through that long distant disappeared past. We have to learn from the past. That's very important. We don't have to forget the past. But we don't what we have to be careful is that we don't bring the past into the present and we don't let go of it because it, it's gone, definitely gone. Nothing left. Absolutely nothing. No, there isn't an atom, I say, of our body that is the same from one moment to the next. There isn't a thought in our mind or a feeling or experience. Or There's no part of ourself which is lasting for more than just one instant. And that instant itself is just part of a process of change. And so this, we've got to See, this is the truth, and living with that truth, we can then act with wisdom to make the world a better place for everybody, trying to help them to realize this truth in skillful ways, whatever it may be. But it might be that we have to be tough. <coughs> and usually we're over tough because we're grasping some permanent person has got a permanent problem and so we just have to put them away for life and forget about them or kill them and then problem over mm. that's sad that's very nasty and destructive way to live our, or run our society really. we label people and we can't let go of those labels and doctors do this, and everybody does that does this who's in the sort of education and caring and whatever power positions we tend to hold on to the label as though that person's the same. We've got the same label, there's the same process, same person there. Actually, they've changed. We've got to give them the freedom, the opportunity to change and stop grasping at these labels but of course we have to be stupid and let somebody free who could re-offend you know we have to try to use wisdom and judgment of how much change have they actually realized themselves if they're still stuck and we can't give them freedom to go back into a dangerous situation mm. hmm So has this brought some inner peace, or has it caused you to become less peaceful? <laughs> <laughs> mm, it is the real source, the true source of inner peace, because this wisdom doesn't just clear away the, di the temporary sort of disturbing thoughts and feelings which from our meditation, but it allows us to to be dynamic and live in that flow, in the flow of life, to become part of that great current of time and transformation and and just love, just enjoy such peace as we go, such strength, such power, such stillness. We're still, because we're going with the flow and we we don't feel we're moving. It's when we're fighting against the flow we feel that life's running away from us. 
we go with it, then it's like we become one with the flow, so we're not moving, we're going in harmony, in stillness. Mm. Okay, maybe let's try the meditation. Just let our mind sink naturally, settle into the deep, clear space beyond our moving thoughts, our constant changing feelings, our bodily experience, our, the sounds, the distracting sounds, the memories, the constant flow of appearance and imagination and just try to use our wisdom to come to stillness through letting go, letting go, letting go just like just jumping into a great bubbly ocean and just let yourself sink, <coughs> sink through it until you be, be below the waves, you're below the bubbles, you're in that deep clear space and deep in our hearts, you can feel down here, that's where we've got to get, the bubbliness is up here, the waves, the distracting waves, thoughts, feelings, so just try to mentally feel through wisdom, we just keep whatever's appearing, it's just disappearing like a bubble, arising, bursting in the ocean, and we just let our minds sink beyond those bubbles into that deep space and then hold ourselves in that clear space with this wisdom, the truth that knows the truth it is just like that there's nothing which is the same from one moment to the next just changing causes and conditions ok I'll guide you through that now and then be just about lunchtime. So we once more relax our posture, just let go of the physical tension in our back, our neck, our shoulders, just feel it drain away, dissolve, disappear. motivate ourselves to do this meditation and how wonderful would be if we can begin to find true peace deep unchanging peace comes from wisdom the wisdom that knows the truth everything we 
experience everything we feel all the pleasant or unpleasant feelings appearances memories thoughts all the physical things our body our world possessions all the sounds we hear are no more substantial than bubbles arising transforming dissolving bursting disappearing wonderful if through this wisdom we can learn to let go of the past and transform the present into a joyful, peaceful, spiritual journey to the future, to freedom, to liberation. You can share that journey with everyone around us, family, friends, whole society. we just look into the ocean of our mind let our mind settle recognizing all the bodily feelings of pain or pleasure the sounds which appear, ever-changing thoughts and images, memories, just like bubbles arising in that ocean, dissolving, bursting, disappearing. Through that wisdom, letting go, moment by moment, we feel our mind settle to a deep, clear space in our hearts, naturally, gradually.
doesn't matter what bubble likes or hearts or feelings arise, pleasant, unpleasant, painful, beautiful. They're just like bubbles arising, bursting, disappearing. Moment by moment. Just let go, let them burst and disappear. And naturally, your mind comes to stillness. sounds, or bodily feelings, or memories, thoughts, imagination, just no more substantial. Wisdom, we can find deep stillness, just letting go, moment by moment, with all appearance, all distraction. Till our mind goes so deep. To all appearance may even disappear. Just focus on that deep, clear inner space, deep in our hearts, 
absorb ourselves into that stillness, wisdom space. Gently draw to close our meditation, preparing to go back into ever-changing world of appearance, of transformation. Try to keep ourselves anchored in our hearts in that wisdom space, not clinging. Being at peace, in harmony with the ever-changing dance of life, great flow of time, transformation. And with that wisdom we can try to then make our world, the world of those around us, a wiser, more peaceful space, bring joy, bring freedom, let go of the darkness of depression, conflict, obsession. Thank you. Now we can relax and meditation. It's hopefully time for lunch. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat too much. <laughs> it will be delicious. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>